blessed to hear that song again. Uh, thank you, Alisa, for reading the scripture this morning. Uh, when Pastor Rossetti asked me if I could uh, take his pulpit today, I said yes, not knowing what topic to talk about. Uh, then after reading uh, Revelation 13 and 14, I changed my mind. I was planning. I, I, I'm aware that we are celebrating Father's Day today. And I could have chosen to talk on that topic. But uh, the Lord impressed me to talk about a subject that is very important as we end closer to the coming of our Lord. And that issue is no other than worship. Because worship will divide God's people from the people of the world. And I was wondering what is really the issue that caused the great controversy of the world? What does Satan want more than anything? And I found out that it is worship. It was worship that he wanted in heaven. And it is worship that he wants here on earth. Re you remember that um, even during the hour of temptation, he had the guts to ask the Lord Jesus to worship him. And so I thought uh, that I cannot speak on a more important topic than who we worship, how we worship, and what is really the meaning and purpose of true worship. And so I decided that what I'm going to talk about this morning. And uh, I'd like to help, uh, ask the help of uh, somebody here if this will not work. Uh, Oh, I thank you. It, it works. Thank you, Glenn. He's the one who is helping me in this. Anybody here knows what kind of tree this is? I, I see everybody shaking their head. This is not the tree of life. <laughs> Nor is this the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'll tell you. This tree is called the Baliti tree. And uh, in the Philippines, in remote areas of the Philippines, this tree is believed to be the dwelling place of demons. And there are some people who come and worship this tree. When I saw people worshiping this tree and they, they were bringing their food offerings on the, at, at the base of this tree, I felt sorry for them. And rightly so. Because when you worship a tree just because the demons live in there, you are breaking God's law. The first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then when I became a Seventh-day Adventist, sometime in, when I was in college, I, I began to realize how fortunate I am that I, I was not worshiping this tree like these people. And I started praying, God, thank you. Thank you that I am not like these mountain people worshiping the tree. And then somehow I realized I was becoming like the Pharisee. I recall that in, in the, one of the parables of Jesus, and that's found in Luke chapter 18, 
about the Pharisee and the tax collector who went up to the temple and prayed. And the prayer of the Pharisee was like mine. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, extortionist, uh, unjust, adulterers. And Jesus said, this Pharisee went home unjustified because of the way he looked at himself. Right? And then I realized, Lord, forgive me. That I felt that way. That I felt better than the mountain people who worship the tree. And then I said, I, I'm sorry I felt that I am more righteous than them. I know I hurt your feelings, O oh Lord, because you love these people as much as you love me. And then when I recall that Pastor Rossetti asked me to preach today, I said, I, I'll, I'll just drop my topic on Father's Day. And so I said, I'll talk about worship. Because I feel that we as a people have the tendency to look at ourselves better than others. Because we worship on the Sabbath day, we have, God, uh, we have Ellen White as our prophet. We know what we are doing. And so, this morning, again I repeat, I'd like to talk about who to worship, how we worship, and what is really the meaning of true an acceptable worship. So let me begin by saying that we as a people worship God in two different ways. We worship God on Sabbath days as a congregation. That's public worship. But then there's another way of worshiping God, which to me, is far more important than what we are doing now, public worship. And that worship, I call that private worship. A worship that is not structured, a worship that is a daily devotion to God, to God or could be a daily devotion to something or someone. So, I'd like to ask you a question. Which do you think is more important? Public worship or private worship? I'd say, and I submit to you, that we won't be saved as a church. Nobody will be saved because you are a member of the church. Salvation is individual. Salvation is by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. But you can never have true faith in Jesus if you don't know him. That you that Jesus loves you so much. See, salvation is really a love relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, the next question is, what is the best expression of love? What is really, how do you prove that you love God? Is it offering? Is it keeping Sabbath? Yes, true, but that's not the most important answer to the question. What is the best way to express love? It's time. 
Time is the best expression of love. That's why God gave us the Sabbath. Because he loves us so much that he wants us to spend time with him at least once a week. So the next question would be, since love is the best expression, uh, uh, time, I'm sorry, time is the best expression of love. The next question is, who gets most of your time? I mean your free time. You said God or you spend more time with your Facebook? Spend time on your TV? See, the thing is, here's the point I'm trying to make here, is that whoever you th spend more time with, that's your idol or your God. Of whom you love to think and of who you love to talk, that one is who you worship. So that answers the topic that I choose. Of, of, who, uh, of whom you love to think and of who you love to talk, that one is who you worship. So with my topic this morning that I choose, know who you worship. So the devil doesn't really care. You worship things or you worship him directly because See, the point I'm, I'm, I'm saying here is the issue really in the great controversy is worship. That's really the, the, what you call the core issue in the great controversy. He doesn't care whether you worship things or you worship him as long as you don't worship God. You worship him indirectly, like the people of the mountain, when you worship things. You worship him indirectly when you spend more time with your toys. However, it's interesting that uh, when I consider the fact that in the thousands of years, Satan used three ways of forcing people to worship him. One question, persecution, and deception. But in the case of the recent years, uh, I found out that Christ must be coming very soon because in the past, Satan had to use coercion, persecution. You know, remember during the time of the pagan Rome and people Rome, what happened was Satan had to use persecution for 1,260 years. So people will worship him. But it was not successful because there were more people replacing those who died for God than those who, uh, people who replace those who give in to those who did not. Thank you. And in recent years, I don't know if you are aware of this, but uh, uh, that's done, we know public worship and private worship. In recent years, 
Satan doesn't have to use coercion. Satan doesn't have to use um, persecution. Satan doesn't have to use deception for people to worship him. You know what happened? On April 30, 1966, the Church of Satan was founded in San Francisco. And it is now present in most uh, big cities across America. So people are now evenly, uh, not evenly, but people are now uh, worshiping Satan without being deceived. They worship Satan by choice. So what I'm uh, giving here to you is that we have um, on both ends of the spectrum are two churches, one for Satan and one for God. And at the middle are the millions of undecided. And as I read the spirit of prophecy, the church of Satan on the left on the far left, and God's church, which is the remnant church where you and I belong, is on the, on the right. And at the middle, the undecided. And in my studies, I found out that at the middle are many souls just waiting for the three angels' messages. And they will make a decision to, to join God's church. And the remainder will stay where they are and they belong to Satan's church. So then we go to the, the, the meaning of uh, through worship. Because, as I said before, we worship God formally, which is uh, in church, and we worship privately. I, I look at uh, what Ellen White has to say about the purpose of worship. And this is what Ellen White said about True Worship, which was published in the Review and Herald, August 16, 1881. And it say, it, she said, True Worship consists in working together with Christ, prayers and exhortation and talk are cheap fruits which are frequently tied on but fruits that are manifested in good works, in caring for the needy, the fatherless, and widows, and gen are genuine fruits and grow naturally upon a good tree. So the point he here that I'd like us to remember is that you and me belong to God's church. We worship both publicly and privately. But Ellen White said, what's the purpose of true worship? She said, it is really working with Christ. True worship should end in working with Christ, in saving the millions in the middle of the spectrum that is left through Satan, right for God, and the work of the remnant church is really to share what we have. And that is true worship. Now, going back to the issue of private worship. Uh, like I said, uh, private worship to me personally is far more important than public worship. There were two friends. 
both nominal Seventh-day Adventist Christians, they love fishing. One day, one called his friend and uh, said, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing today. And the friend said, you know, I've decided to go to church today. You go ahead fishing. So one went fishing, the other went to church and worshiped that day. As he sat at the back of the pew, the, he kept wishing he went fishing. Because uh, he was thinking, oh, I wonder what my friend is doing right now. He's fishing. And the sermon is boring. And he keep on thinking, oh, next time I'll really go fishing. Uh, this uh, church business is boring to me. On the other hand, his friend who went fishing keep thinking, I wish I went to church today. I, I don't have a catch, not even one. And so he said, next Sabbath, I'll go to church. So they met and they talked about it and said, oh, how, how did you do? Oh, no cats. How was church? It's boring. Anyway, I was thinking about these two friends. They were called nominal, Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And the meaning of that word nominal, I, th I think you know. It means in name only. Who worshiped that day? <laughs> I leave that to you, but anyway. Uh, the point is, they became nominal. You know why? They have a problem with their private worship. Their worship publicly may be okay. So if you come to church, you're okay. But when you worship, your private worship is suspect. It will show in how you conduct yourself in regards to keeping God's commandment. One was able to keep the Sabbath physically, but not spiritually, because his mind was away. He may be in church, but he was thinking of other things. That's why the 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 study of God's word became boring. On the other hand, his friend, who went fishing, may be present in spirit, but not physically. So they both failed to keep the Sabbath day holy. And so therefore, their private worship is suspect. And so that reminds me one time when Jesus was in Judea and the leaders of the temple noticed that he was attracting more people because he was teaching not like other teachers. He was teaching the people with authority. And what happened was they started uh, trying to catch him by sending spies, you know, try to catch our Lord. And the Lord decided to go to Galilee. And you'll, you'll find that in John chapter 4. 
when he de- when he decided to go to uh, Galilee, his style is different from the other Jewish people. When they go to Galilee, uh, when they go from Jerusalem to Galilee or or back to Jerusalem, they always uh, go around Samaria because of prejudice. But the Lord, no. Let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 4. I'll give you time to find it. John chapter 4. And let's read uh, verse 1 to 4. I read, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. And I'd like you to notice uh, verse 4 especially. But he, Jesus, needed to go through Samaria. That word needed in some versions of the Bible is translated decided to. There is intentionality in that word. When, when he, Jesus said, we'll go to Galilee, he needed to go to Samaria. Why? Because Jesus loved the Samaritans as much as he loved Israelites or the Hebrews. He needed to um, talk to that woman at the, at the well. For, and you, you notice that when Jesus stayed in the uh, well, there was that woman who came. You know the rest of the story, the woman at the well. This woman became so... Uh, and easy, so uncomfortable about the fact that here's Jesus now trying, uh, telling him the secrets of his love life. And so she decided to change the topic. And of all things, she chose to, to talk about worship by asking Jesus whether or not it's good. Uh, it, uh, what does it say? Um, let's read verse 21 and 22, which was uh, read by Lisa a while ago. 21 and 22. And this is the response of Jesus to the answer. Do we worship in Mount Gerizim or in Jerusalem? And Jesus answered, 21 and 22, she said, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we... uh, we, We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Please notice that how Jesus connects worship to salvation. He wanted to uh, illumine the eyes of the people in Samaria through this woman that true worship has some connection to salvation. And that's why verse 4 of Chapter 4 said Jesus needed to go to go through Samaria. 
for that very purpose. Because the Samar Samar Samaritans had the uh, issue of who they worship. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's the point, Brother Pat? What are you trying to say? That we know who we worship. Why are you talking about the Samaritans? How is that related to how we worship here? You see, Satan is very deceiving. He's a wily foe. He may not be able to deceive us in who we worship. Because we know who we worship. We worship God, the creator of heaven and earth. But, you know, he could deceive us in how we worship. And that serves his purpose as well. You know, before I uh, go to the next point I'd like to make, I'd like to make a confession to you. Like many of you, I am very thankful to God for Central Filipino Church, that I am a member of this church. That's why this morning in the morning uh, prayer service, I, I made a testimony that last Tuesday while I was attending the Glendale Academy board meeting, somebody did not notice me, oh, notice me for the first time because I've been absent for many months. And he asked me, where are you from? I, I, I said, I'm from Central Filipino Church. And then he said, he made a comment that made me thought very hard when I went home. He said, oh, you belong to Central Filipino Church. I heard so much good things about your church. And I said, have you been there? Have you worshiped with us? He said, no, but I plan to. And so I'm very, very thankful to God for our church. Um, we, have, we have a church that is unique in that our worship style here is Bible-based and our sermons are Christ-centered. And I just pray that we maintain it that way. Because God is coming up. God wants us to be the light of the world. And some of the Seventh-day Adventist churches out there are now copying the ways of the Protestants on how they worship. You don't even recognize if it's worship service or a jam session. So having said that, I'd like us to consider the fact that Satan can deceive us and try to change us the way we worship formally. I'm now, now talking about formal worship. Remember, I said two ways we can worship God. One, formally, which is on Sabbath days here in church. The other one is private worship. But on public worship, Satan could still deceive us. Not in how we worship, but in how we worship. And so, I'd like to end with this thought. Because I know you, as much as I do, love our church. And I, let's, make, let's make it so that Satan 
will be defeated and he cannot change the way we worship. You, you know, there's a difference. Oh, there are, there are uh, similarities between worship and program. That's a given. But there are distinct differences between uh, worship and a program. A program is not worship. Worship is Godward. Program is horizontal. So, wor worship, the different, I'd like to give you the differences between having a program and having a worship. Uh, worship has a platform. No, did I say that? That's wrong. <laughs> I'm glad you're awake. Worship has a platform. Program has a stage. Worship has a congregation. Program has Sorry, I missed it. That's okay. Okay, uh, let me repeat. Uh, worship has a platform. Program has a stage. Worship has participants. Program has performers. Worship has also oh, worship has a congregation. Worship program has audience. Worship pays tribute to God alone. Program pays tribute to man also. There's so many other differences, but I'd like to focus on those because those are the common differences that I notice as I go visiting other churches. I thought I went there to worship. I found out I attended a program. I, I'm not talking about our church, but I'm just referring. So in conclusion, uh, I'd like us to remember that the more we know who we worship, the more meaningful our worship experience shall be. And the more we know Christ, the more we long to see him face to face. And at the end of our life's journey, we can with uh, great assurance, like the Apostle Paul, I know whom I believe, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. This video was recorded from Central Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church to help prepare people for the soon return of Jesus Christ. If you would like to visit us and for more information, go to www.centralfilipino.org.